This is a computer. The computer is a Toshiba satellite from the early 2000s, and I was actually able to find this lying around untouched in my dorm. As you can see in the background, there is a room in my dorm where people can make and deconstruct microcontrollers in old desktops. And in that room was this laptop, a laptop with Windows XP Home Edition. Now I found this lying around with half a charger, which could be why not a lot of people went to town with it. Fortunately and conveniently, I have this cord originally used to charge the battery of my old camera and it fits as a plug-in half of the charger. So I plugged my half with the original half, plugged it into a wall, and sure enough, it got a charge. As I was powering it on for the first time, my first impression was that the laptop would not boot Windows XP. Given that it's a 20-year-old laptop in a dorm filled with 20-year-old engineering students, I was anticipating that it boots either some other operating system or nothing at all. Yet, somehow... Uh... Yeah, see... Of all things, we can see if it runs... Thing, uh, something. Oh my god! There's no fucking way they just kept this laying around for 21 years! Yeah, apparently the laptop was left mostly unscathed. I say mostly because there were several things altered within the operating system. You couldn't get wallpapers to show up, some of the programs you expect out of the box were missing, and the sound registrar only came with two events, both for power management. That's it. Oh, and there was this policy pop-up that shows up on start. That is how I found it back in August of 2022. Now that it's been a few months, from the time I recorded this, I can gladly tell you that the critical functionalities have been restored, and I'm going to show you how I did this. So, here we are in the original file configuration powered by a system restore, and just in case things get interesting, which it will, I already made a restore point to the originally complete version. With that being said, let's get started with this operation. When I first saw the problems with the sounds and the background, my first impression was that the registry editor went brrrr. So I opened up the registry editor, selected my way to the wallpaper keys, and to my surprise, those keys didn't exist in the registry, which is why the wallpaper itself is failing to load. On the contrary, the computer can load colors and taskbar themes, but without some critical keys, I won't be able to see any wallpaper. So to fix this, I'm going to need the help of another computer. Now this is a computer I actually own. This bulky, holographic-like laptop is the Dell Studio 1555, built in 2008. And yes, if you can see where I'm going with this, this computer runs Windows Vista Home Premium. And yes, we are going to port some of the software files from the Windows Vista to the Windows XP. First I'll head into the registry editor. We'll bypass the user account control. And now we're in. Next, I need to find the problematic keys from Windows XP and hunt it down in Vista, because in theory, Microsoft is not going to try to reinvent the wheel when a stable shell was already perfected. And sure enough, we were at the equivalent pass, H key current user, slash control panel, slash desktop, and you can tell that the registry in XP is more bare bones than what is shown in Vista. Now granted, Vista needed more keys to support the Arrow design language, but some of the more essential keys, like wallpaper, exists on the Vista machine, but doesn't in XP. This key stores the path of the wallpaper, and it's standard for Windows Protocol. So, 
There are a few ways to do this. One of these ways is exporting the needed keys on a flash drive and importing them into the XP. Now in this recording, I took the extreme measure of copying the entire folder and exporting it to my thumb drive, just to see what would happen. And you'll see in a moment why this wasn't a good idea. Once I've saved the key file onto my flash drive, I unplugged it from my Dell Studio and plugged it into the Toshiba satellite. I then entered the registry, clicked on import, loaded the file, and... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot that this computer only came with a local account. No administrator account exists. So the only way I can edit the editor was to get full control of the system. Now in Windows XP, it's as simple as getting into the permissions, adding your user account to the security registrar, going into advanced properties and making yourself the owner of the machine, giving yourself all the privileges, and then clicking apply. Remember, this is closed source software. Windows is supposed to have so many hoops to avoid even a CS student to fits around with a computer. I then entered the registry, clicked on import, loaded the file, and we have the keys added to the registry. Now these were keys for the background, so if I go into appearance settings to set a wallpaper, you can now see that the wallpaper is now working. So that's one problem fixed. Now to the audio events. As you can see, I uploaded the sound keys into the registry off recording, and you can easily tell that this is a complete copy-paste of the keys on Windows Vista. I mean, user account control? Feed discovered? What are these things doing in here? Fortunately, Windows XP doesn't recognize these events. Having these in the register won't crash the operating system, it'll rather ignore them. And as for the others, it's fairly easy to swap the sounds and properties. There is, unfortunately, one key missing. The absence of the system start key is keeping us from the startup sound anyone from an earshot can recognize. I went back into the registry editor and found that the system start key is left barren. I did some adjustments by editing the event name and created string values for the event code. I then had to go into schemes slash apps slash default to create a new key for the system start as Windows Vista does not have that key in its own registry. From there, I manually built the key with the subkeys and string values to make the start sound as the target. Now that I've restarted my machine, it should leave us off with this. It works. Now, you may have come to notice that the text looks less XP-esque. That is because Windows XP did recognize some of the font smoothing keys from Vista and made the text look more modern and smooth. It does look a little weird to see smooth, modern text in an older version of Windows, so if you really wanted to keep the good old feel of XP, it's best to export only the necessary keys you need from a more modern machine rather than importing the whole damn enchilada. And that's it. It's crazy that in one semester I taught myself some of the basics on how an operating system is created, which I have yet to have taken a course for, all because I wanted to see Windows XP in a more acceptable form. Plus, this was all done without a recovery disk because who expects a typical college student to possess a disk for a but old operating system? I am not going to deny that there are still a few problems on the machine, issues which I still need to fix, like the pop-ups not playing an audio event. So for example, I was not able to hear critical stop 
or any other sound effect when a pop-up appeared. If anyone has ideas on how this can be fixed, let me know in the comments and I can do some experimenting over the coming months while I'm still in the dorm. But for now, it's acceptable enough to have for nostalgic purposes. And I do thank you for sticking around to the end. You all seem to like the fact that I post nostalgic tech on this channel, which is something I love doing and covering, so I'm planning to post more content like this in the future. I already have video plans stretching out for the next several months, so do be on the lookout for those. But anyways, I hope everyone is doing well, and I'll end the video with some Space Cadet.